fuck's that? <laughs> no way there's a bitch in the kitchen. <laughs> there's a pigeon in the kitchen. There's a pigeon in the kitchen. I wonder if they catch it up, you know, pluck those feathers right off. Those That would be good frying up food right there. Love me some good fried pigeon. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Reminds me of home. Mm. Pigeon. Oh my god. It's never ending. Just when I think I've seen enough, there's more. Look, dead. Decomposed, soft, dead. Oh, that's the snails. Oh, how? Oh. I didn't even get the name of this restaurant, but everything is so slimy and disgusting that it's, I'm, I'm just, my skin is crawling. I feel like I'm the snail crawling around. The, oh, 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 oh. All right. We're, we're a minute and 30 into this. So if, this, if we keep going at this pace, this is going to be, this is going to be a 12 hour long video. Oh, no. I'll get back to it. What is that in there? That is a raw dead lobster. That is disgusting. It's two hours into Chef Ramsay's inspection. That is a raw dead lobster. I don't even have to say anything about that. Who in the hell buys produce here? Who? Oh, here we go. Gordon's about to give them a piece of his mind real quick. Real quick. Who's responsible for that? I am. You are. Pigeon. What I'm trying to look at are the profits, the purchasing, the thousands of dollars waste. These here, they came in yesterday. That's yesterday? They came in yesterday and they died yesterday. Oh, lies! I guess that's actually possible if they just didn't keep them properly and they just died immediately, but I don't know. That seems like a stretch. Then, let's have a little look around here. Jerry, please. And you wonder why I don't like your sauce. That is a dead lobster. And the freshest thing in this kitchen is that pigeon flying around. <laughs> Look, Gordon is an international treasure and he must be protected. That's all I'm gonna say about this. by the front door. Huh? I, it's by the door. All right, we're on to a new restaurant and already that's a bad start. There was a dead mouse right by the front door, it looks like, which you think maybe someone would have said something about, but I, who knows, who knows? I, I, I don't know. You'd think someone would maybe just get a dustpan and like, sweep up the dead mouse, but no, they left it for Gordon to find, so perfect. Let's get right into it. No, we just had the exterminator. You paid for the exterminator? Sure. Get your money back. Okay, that's not funny. I'm going to say we always have the exterminator once a month for prevention. Are you serious? Are you kidding me? He thinks he planted the mouse. Oh, oh, that's a bold accusation. That is a bold accusation. They're challenging directly to Gordon's integrity. I don't know how that's gonna go over here. Well, you thought I brought it in out of my pocket? Yeah, I think you did. Are you, are you, are you f***ing dreaming? I arrived, the never. mouse was there. Never, never heard. Never. There was no, no. You know what? That's how you know he's getting defensive. As someone who grew up in the South, the more negatives you start compiling onto it, the more pissed off and aggravated you're getting. I ain't never known, never known, never known, never known. Never, 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 never in my life seen no milestone there. Oh, God damn. Oh, that's crazy. Not. Okay. So we had the exterminator last week. They come on regular occasions. Yes. We have an issue with mice. That's why you have an exterminator. We, we don't have 
have an issue with mice. The exterminator comes in okay. regularly. Just... Let's, let's, you know, I do a little investigation. You should have an exterminator whether or not they have an issue with mice, but I, I don't know how I feel about that point. Not the strongest point made by Gordon, yeah. Let's go. Dwayne, when was the last time you spotted a mouse in here? I, I've never seen one. You've never seen one? No. Good. Except that one that was under the steam table that was dead a few months back. <laughs> Almost a year back. He straight up lied to Gordon's face! Okay, so maybe they did have the exterminator because they knew that there was a mouse problem. You know what? You know what? You know what? I'm, I'm gonna leave my commentary to the expert. That's fair. That's why I am not the mouse expert, and he is, so that's fair enough. You got me on that one, Gordon. You got me on that one. He found a mouse in the front door. I've never been so embarrassed and humiliated in my life. This is ridiculous. Really ridiculous. And sad. I've never seen a mice in this. Perhaps we planted that um, mouse. And you are suggesting that I brought it in. I was like, hmm, I put it together, like, just for TV's sake, maybe. I, I wish you would talk a little bit of sense. <laughs> the TV, put your money where your mouth is, in front of your staff. I want a meeting upstairs with you and everybody now. This is gonna go bad. This is gonna go poorly. He's accusing Gordon of planting a mouse for TV's sake, which, as we know, this is bigger than TV. Gordon is here to show these erroneous chefs the way and the light. He doesn't give a f about this TV. So, I, I have a feeling this is gonna go down very poorly for my friend here. With mice out of his pockets and stuff. Yeah, and chasing his possibilities or something, man. How you gonna help with this if everybody keeps a mouse in the front oh, man, it's, it's, it's... This is the only man speaking truth. Like, just take responsibility. Like, just, there's no reason you're on Kitchen Nightmares right now. Like, just own up to it. Be like, yeah, maybe there was a mouse. That sounds about par for the course for what we got going on in our restaurant. And then move on and get, you know, the renovation team, get all the free stuff. Why would you look a gift horse in the mouth like this and accuse that gift horse of planting a dead mouse in your establishment? Like, just, it doesn't make sense to me. It's mice infested all over this place. It can happen. It can happen. Get up. Get up. Shelly. Huh? Can I have a two seconds, please? Okay. <coughs> all, all of you. This is very, very important. So. Uh -huh. I was telling him, I seen him, like, almost like, like that uh, German thing. Oh, he told her it like he knew for sure. Ooh. Come on, you. Oh, they're colluding now. This is this is just good. So just look at James for me, two seconds. I walked in the front door, a mouse. The mouse that you planted, I know. They told me, but it's okay. No, it's not it's okay. A show. It's got nothing to do with TV. Nothing to do with your business in the. I am not gonna stand there and even attempt to take that crap from you. You can take your restaurant and stick it. I am gone. I'm out of here. You out of here. I'm out of here. Excuse me. Go. See you later. Shut it down. Let's go. You can't storm out from your old restaurant. That's not how this works. You can't just get mad and be like, ah, you're my restaurant. I'm like, I. I'm not getting fired, I quit. Yeah, oh, yeah, um, you're done with this, well, I'm extra done with this. I'm... That's not how this works. Come on, like, be an adult and just take your lumps. He's not doing this for TV. He's doing this because your restaurant sucks. What is this, Blackberries catering? I, mean, I just, I, I don't know, I don't know. It's over. By the way, while I'm at it, make sure you subscribe. This one's on Gordon Ramsay's page. Kitchen Nightmares also has its own page. I don't know how that factors out. Subscribe to both of them. They got some great content. Like, I'm having a blast right now doing this. The cowboy burger. Look at how big that burger patty is. There's no way the middle of it is cooked properly, too. It's gonna, that's 100%. I'm just gonna start playing it because I know that's already coming, but there's no way the center of that burger is cooked properly. Cowboy with a very small hat. A 
bun top. Look at the bun. Where'd you start? <laughs> impressive if you got it overcooked of a burger that big. You know what? Pops to them. Pops to them. They proved me wrong and still somehow fucked up at the same time. So, you know, you know what? At least they, at least they surprised me, keeping me on my toes, you know? I like that. I like that. I also love how nice he is always to the wait staff. The wait staff is always on his side and he's always super nice to them. That is one of my biggest things. If you're mean to wait staff, you don't deserve anything in this world. I'm just gonna say that right now. They're human beings just like you are. Treat them with the respect. And they are also usually not the cause of any of the kind of problems that go on in restaurants often. Often, you know, it's managerial, it's the food, it's like, you know, they just end up being the messenger. And I hate, hate seeing people mean to wait staff. You're a terrible person if you do it. Just absolutely putting that one out there. And Gordon is a perfect example of how you should be treating these kind of people. I was shocked, disappointed, embarrassed. Good. Dude, pies up, guys. But one thing I have that's a little different is an Australian meat pie. The Australian meat pie is the number one staple in Australia. I have brought them to America. And Chef Ramsay will absolutely love it. Something tells me that an Australian meat pie isn't actually that popular of a thing. You know what? Let me look it up. All right. Excuse me, Mom. It is a thing, but, you know, we'll see how his meat pie is. Ramsay will absolutely love it. That's Ramsay's, by the way. He's not going to like it. What? So the chef knows, the chef already knows in his heart that this <laughs> sucks, so that's already off to kind of a rocky start. He's not gonna like it. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Like, this is the... The Australian meat pie. Oh. The beef. Time to go down under. I gotta say, that looks pretty horrendous. The last thing you want when you start cracking in a kind of fried thing is that amount of greasiness and wetness. It just completely ruins it and it just turns it into a soggy mess. And I, yeah, that's that's not looking like how the pictures that I saw for what a meat pie is supposed to look like. I mean, that is disgusting. That Australian pie come back to Australia with pleasure. I've got raw, doughy pastry on top and soggy, gooey stuff on the bottom. One word for this. Yeah, cat food be disgusting. Oh, okay, so in this next one, this lady is just saying she pulled a bone out of the sauce for what she's eating. She specifically ordered something vegetarian. So, you know, the implication there being is she done broke her morals, so she's a terrible person. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But it's this is gonna come back. This is this isn't this isn't good. Gordon is not gonna be happy about this. We're gonna have to see how that pans out. Joe, two seconds. There's a bone. They were eating. It's vegetarian. And the tomato sauce. They put pork bones in it. What the? F she's vegetarian. That's how we do it every day. John is responsible for the methods that we use to produce the food. Get me John, urgently. He says, if you don't like it, leave. John, this, this is urgent now. A lady has just found a pork bone in the brigantine. We use it to give the sauce, but we always, just always add it. Sausage, So sauce. you're serving pork bones in the sauce to a vegetarian. Oh, sweet. You could tell that look on his face was just a look of like, yeah, so what the, what the f point? Like, what's the problem? I don't, I don't see. It's, it gives it the flavor. Like, that's, 
What's the point? It gives it the flavor. But I wish people would just open their mind a little bit. You can have, you know, I love a good, I love meats. Like, I, I am not, you know, any kind of vegan or vegetarian. But with that being said, there are some very great vegan and vegetarian options that are very flavorful. And people should eat them more often because you can't just eat meats all the time. So, you know, he could find some way to make that sauce flavorful without having to put it, you know, in pork bones. Also, the bigger problem is... Every time you serve something without it, vegetarians are gonna complain, and it's gonna be a problem at your restaurant, and it's gonna look very badly on you, so. Maybe you should listen to Gordon here. Maybe you should just take his advice, but we'll, we'll see if he does. That's how we prepared food for the last 40 years, and I don't see that being a problem. A pork sauce to a fucking vegetarian? It's the way we've always done our business. But you can't serve a vegetarian a pork sauce. Yeah, that shit could fly in the 70s, but today that's not how this works. Like, the food landscape has changed. You gotta evolve, you gotta keep moving forward, and just like, can't just be stuck in the past like so many others. That could go for a lot of different things, but in this case, we're talking about food-wise. So, yes, you can't just be doing things just because that's how mama and papa always did the recipe. You gotta change, you gotta evolve, and keep with the times. <laughs> sick after eating lobster that's bad that is bad b-a-d bad john Okay, the chef knows the implications of this, so this seems like another one of those managers doesn't know what he's doing kind of a thing. I mean, I guess the chef could have stopped it, you know, and not let the 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 gross ammonia lobster go out, which is also crazy. I didn't know that, but good to know, keeping that in mind. But, uh, yeah, I guess he could have stopped it, but maybe he wasn't the one cooking them. And, like, also, it's not usually the head chef who's the one who's in charge of purchasing. So, I don't know if he would know how old those lobster tails are. Probably should, but it seems like everybody, even though he knows the right thing to do, everybody's just like, yeah, yeah, you know, we're doing it. We're going with it. So. And whilst we're discussing this, there's a man vomiting in the toilet now. I can't believe this is happening right now. Feels like shit. I know that you got somebody sick. No. I can't believe this is happening right now. Feels like shit. I know that you got somebody sick. And it's the first time you've got your head out of the dough. But it's John's responsibility no matter what. Because John buys all the product that we use. Yeah, please. Should we call an ambulance? Yeah. Just not the well. Call an ambulance. Hi, right, this is Sal's Pizzeria. I need an ambulance. The bus was not feeling well. What the f*** is a pizzeria serving lobster tails in the first place? I think that actually may be the best question. I, that just, that two and two just came to me. Why? Why? Just stick to your lane. That's, that's probably why the lobsters are old and bad. How many times is someone coming into a pizzeria and ordering lobster tails from you? Oh, gosh. Just stick to your lane, people. Stick to your lane. Your face is really flush. My worst fear is running. That dude does look sick as f too. They probably should be calling him and not. But, um, 
ambulance right now. It's pro probably for the best. You get stuck in my restaurant. Where's a shot of something? I need a shot. I need a shot of something. I got a guy vomiting. Oh, give, me, give me something. Give me quick. Whiskey? Vodka, what? Vodka. If somebody came to your house and you cooked them a dinner, how would you feel he started puking all over the place? How would you feel? I'd take a shot. Yeah, that's probably about what I would do. I would throw back some, throw back some shots, you know, get lit. Yeah, that's, that's probably how I would react to that situation, too. <laughs> had some lobster and he has a reaction to it. The gentleman sit down. Oh my god. We just saw an ambulance come out? Yes. Oh my god. Needs to kill the cameras. Kill the cameras. That's such a bad look. Like that's such, such a bad look. Yeah, I can imagine all those other people sitting in the restaurant like, uh, did you, did you guys, you, you saw that, right? Like that was, that was an ambulance that just came in here, right? <laughs> it's gonna be like, yeah, yeah, it is for that guy. He's been, you know, puking in the back of the restaurant for a while. I don't know if you noticed him. He's right, he's right over there, actually. Uh, yeah, he's, yeah, he, he may die, may die. Um, but keep enjoying the tagatelli, you know? Keep enjoying the, uh, process. <laughs> he said, cut, cut, we're ending this. That's the end of the show. Cut, cut, cut those cameras. Get him out of here. Good, nope, nope, that's a wrap. Yep, I'm the director now. That's a wrap. Great episode. Pack it up, you guys, pack it up. Take it home. Take it home, boys. You did great. Killed it. Well, you know, and I, I do say this. No, I hope that last guy is okay. I'm, I'm sure that was a rough experience I had to go through, but his face wasn't blurred out. And so I'm assuming he probably turned out okay after it. And they let him show it. So I, again, hope the guy is okay. I was laughing at it a lot. But at the end of the day, this is an important learning lesson for anybody who's got a restaurant. Don't let yourself get to the point where you have to have Gordon come into your sh and roast the ever-loving hell out of you because it's just going to be a bad look for your restaurant. <sighs> Thanks everyone for joining me today. I know I had a great morning. Um, I'm going to go probably comb my hair because I think I look kind of, kind of iffy right now. Uh, I'm probably going to go get ready, go enjoy the rest of the day, um, which you should as well, or enjoy the rest of your night or whatever time it is. Uh, but thanks anyway for coming through. Like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you know when I got new stuff coming, which should be a whole lot more fun in the new future. Gonna have a lot of cool series, so please keep your eye out and stay tuned. Thanks again. Peace out. <laughs>